A labor relations professional says the local economy is not ready for new taxes as announced in the 2015-2016 budget. The parliamentary opposition calls for greater inclusion in free budget consultations and Ambassador Felix Gregoire remembers former Freedom Party Health Minister Alan Guy dead at 86. I am Idona John Baptist with the Channel 5 News. Details coming up. And don't waste time, eh? You know we deliver all over Dominica. The customer waiting for their product. All right? Deliver it from Muslim store. Anybody home? Whether you rent or you have your own home, the Muslim store is the place to get what you need. We deliver. You reign. Be the best in class this back to school when you shop at Courts. Get tablets from only $399, laptops from as low as $1,649, and desktops starting at only $1,899. Plus, get a free gift with selected purchases. What's more, shop on credit 24 months and over and pay absolutely nothing for 90 days. With the widest range, the best prices, and the world's best brands, Courts has all you need for back to school. Courts, bringing value home. Welcome back. We begin with the economy where a professional in labor relations says he disapproves of new taxes on goods introduced in the recently passed national budget since, according to him, the local economy has not totally recovered from the 2008 financial crisis. Taxes in the 2015-2016 national budget include a 10% excise tax on alcohol, cigarettes, and food and drinks with high sugar content like soft drinks and chocolate. The import duties on chicken and meats will also increase, ranging from 5, 10, and 20%, with the exception of chicken backs and necks and chicken wings. These duties will take effect on September 1st. I heard the Prime Minister make reference to the reintroduction of excise duties and VAT on certain items that were zero rated somewhere around 2008. The private sector was very much involved in, in dialoguing with the government for the reduction of the duties back then because globally food prices had hit the roof. Now what we see is we're we going back to the 2008 uh, system of VAT and tax. And I understand where the government is coming from because they gave up that revenue for about, what, seven years right now. But I don't believe the economy has rebounded uh, to a pre-2008 period where we can, we can either pass on or absorb the levies or the taxes. Joseph says he does not believe the economy is at a stage for consumers to take in additional expenses. I still believe the economy needs that relief. I still believe the final users of those products, that is those of us who spend money every day on, on items as food, I still think that we need that relief because we, are, we, we have not come out of that period of sluggishness. But I understand the government needs revenue and they have to find a way to create that capacity. The Prime Minister has justified import duties on meat to promote support for local farmers and the abattoir. Joseph says he is in support of expanding local production that will replace imported meats. However, he is cautioning government about the high costs of production, including that associated with importing animal feed. Meat is landed here and placed on the shelves at a much lower price than what can be produced locally. And this is something we all know. Our scope of production is low. We do not have uh, one guy with probably 10,000 birds. You know, the production is low, so therefore the economies of scale are not there. In the Caribbean, and more so in the OECS, our domestic production of meat has never really taken off because of the cost of the feed. Corn is the major ingredient in animal feed. 
We also know that corn is being used in the, in the U.S. and in Europe as an uh, ingredient in the production of alternative energy. And therefore, the corn available for consumption globally is not as much as it used to be. And with demand increasing and supplies not increasing, then obviously the price of corn continues to go up. On the top stories, opposition leader Lennox Linton has called for greater inclusion of the parliamentary opposition in pre-budget consultations. Linton says his United Workers' Party has a lot of sensible ideas to offer government in how it manages the country's affairs. He was responding to a criticism by the Prime Minister that the opposition suggestions could cost government more than what is already budgeted for. We have made these suggestions and in many cases, you see the parliamentary opposition is being shut out of the budget preparation exercise. The Prime Minister can go to musicians, he can speak to hoteliers, he can speak to business people. He doesn't feel he has to say anything or request any conversation or suggestions from the parliamentary opposition for input into the budget. We are only included when the estimates are prepared and when the estimates are circulated and then there, there is a, a time set for the debate in parliament. We enter at the level of, at the stage of the debate, not having, not having been able to, to put anything on the table. Linton feels the opposition's recommendations ought to have been considered at an earlier stage before the parliamentary budget debate. Our ideas being more being superior, you sh they should have been replacing some of the things that the government have come, come with in the budget and not come now as an addition to, so that Mrs. Kerr could say, well, these things that we have decided are set in stone, whatever the opposition brings, where is the money going to come from? We are proposing that using the same amount of money, but using the better ideas and cutting waste from the system, we can get a lot more done for Dominica. The whole idea that the operation has nothing to offer, it, it is counterproductive and it is not serving the people of Dominica. He feels the ideas are coming into the mindset of the Prime Minister and Linton says he welcomes that bipartisan approach. The whole idea of 5-7% to 7 growth, you would, you would have followed how that was criticized and savage when we first came up with it. The idea of growing the economy so that we could get 5,000 jobs in three years, they scoffed at that. Mrs. Kerr is now showing us in this budget where if they implement what they have, they will create 1,000 jobs in this, in this year alone. We said to double the marketing expenditure, the marketing promotion budget for Dominica, destination marketing promotion. Um, they have increased it to 6 million. Not enough as far as we are concerned, but better than what was, was there last year. They have taken the, the tax reduction approach to generating greater levels of, of efficiency and cost efficiency in the tourism plan that could help improve room occupancy. That's a good thing. Um, we don't think they've gone far enough in terms of instruments like the VAT that can, that can come down across the board to 7.5%. CARICOM Ambassador Felix Gregoire describes former Health Minister Alan Guy as a man of wisdom and conviction. Alan Guy passed away at the Imre Ward on Sunday morning. He was the former parliamentary representative for the Rosa North constituency following the 1985 general elections. Gregor says he met Mr. Guy 38 years ago when he started in the public service. He was a tremendous extension officer at the time and he was well respected by staff and by the farmers whom he served. So um, that's how I, I was introduced to Mr. Guy. So he would have helped me in my early days at the Botanic Gardens. But he was what I would call an all-rounder, Mr. Guy. He, he was a tremendous sportsman. You know, he played football for the national team. He played bridge for a number of years. And uh, he was very good at socializing as well. So I remember going to his home from time to time. He made a tremendous contribution in various aspects of life in Dominica. And um, I'd like to extend um, my condolences to members of his family. And uh, I would like to tell him to hold strong that Mr. Guy, in fact, uh, was a champion. Mr. Guy was also the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Community Development and Social Services from 1985 to 1990. He served as Minister for Health and Social Security from 1990 to 1995. General Secretary of the Dominica Freedom Party, Johnson Boston, described Guy as a humble and charitable gentleman who cared for the well-being of others. Alan Guy was 86 years when he died.
A fourth surgery for a man who has had keloids on his face and he is hoping he can live normally after what he hopes is the last procedure. If you ever knew Fitzroy Joseph, who resides in Louisville, or if you ever saw him, you can't help but notice what looks like this huge growing flesh at the side of his face. This is him before his recent surgery. He was not born with this abnormality. However, he lived with it for many years. It's called keloids, a type of scar which grows at the site of an injury. It can develop on the chest, back, shoulders, and earlobes. According to medicinenet.com, it rarely develops on the face except for the jawline, like in Joseph's case. And although he has done surgery on three occasions, it only keeps growing back. He recently had it cut again on the United States Navy hospital ship during the health mission here. I had done it three times already. The problem I had um, doing that three times was the follow-up. The follow-up is like it's more expensive than even the operation itself. And now I decide to do whatever it takes to make sure that it did do come back. It grew back because of the, as I tell you, the medication. The medication, it's like it's even more expensive than the operation itself. How do you plan to get by um, in terms of the follow-up now? Well, um, I have a doctor. I have a doctor that's going to be doing the follow-up. That's Dr. Christian. Dr. Christian, um, he he's going to try his best to do anything possible to make sure that it doesn't come back. That surgery costs some five thousand EC dollars, and that does not include the travel costs for Joseph to go overseas to have it done. The first time I did it in Trinidad. The second time was Totola. Dr. Challenger. Okay. Dr. Challenger, that was the last doctor who did it for me. I did it in Dominica. The last surgery was like five years, five, six years. So what's it like living with keloids? For Joseph, it itches every now and then and has a stinging sensation. It also discharges pus. That the other thing that I grew up with, the other thing that I grew up with, actually um, they told me um, that it is in some black people and I am part of the set of people that it's in. I saw it small, I saw it very small and, you know, the um, thing about pimples and thing and, you know, after time it started to grow and grow and, you know. I saw other people with it that they doing a lot of things to even let people not even see that. It's frustrating. People watching you, um, kids watching you. I didn't put myself like that, so I didn't worry, but it, was, it is very embarrassing. I feel good because after the surgery, they asked me to walk and everything. They gave me um, painkillers, and up to now, I haven't taken one. You're watching Channel 5 News. Coming up, a tribute to the late Lord Tokyo in New York later this month. Stay with us. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fenced pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. If you love that sound, then pour yourself a Glen Hunter Scotch Whiskey and enjoy the taste on the rocks or mix with your favorite beverage. And because Glen Hunter is priced right, you'll be able to double your pleasure. Long after the people who don't drink Glen Hunter have to go home with empty pockets and empty handed. Glen Hunter, a revolution in Scotch Whiskey. Asta fans, right place, right price. Right price. Right price. Summer 2015 is blazing hot and Marpian 2K4 just made it hotter with special deals on our internet service. Sign in for Pingnet between July 27th and September 4th to serve with us and get half off installation and half off your modem. Pay your outstanding balance and get reconnected for free and get half off your first monthly bill. Get 
even more when you sign up this summer during our Pingnet promotion as Mapping 2K4 will give some lucky customers an extra reason to smile with our giveaways. Come visit us at our Rosa location to get on board our fast and reliable service. It's time to serve. It's also my time of sharing at the atmosphere. It was great last year and we're doing it even bigger this year. Clothing designers, this is a call for you. It's your chance to win $2,500 in cash in the Quartz Fashionista Fashion Competition. All you have to do is design a piece of clothing inspired by one of our fashionable pieces of furniture for your chance to win. Participants will then be selected based on design submission and proceed to take part in the biggest fashion competition to showcase their creation. Furniture selection must be made from our newest furniture brochure. So pick one up at a Quartz store quickly. Quartz Fashionista Fashion Competition. Bigger and better than before. So sign up if you dare. Deadline to submit registration forms and designs is August 14. Quartz, bringing value home. Thanks for staying with us. A document could go before cabinet within the next three months to formalize Dominica's position on the establishment of an Eastern Caribbean regulatory agency for the energy sector. Government economist Dr. Eisenhower Douglas has commended efforts by Dominica and other OECS countries to work collaboratively to establish a body to regulate the subregion's energy sector. Representatives of OECS member countries and the World Bank concluded the 11th meeting of the Regional Energy Committee of the Eastern Caribbean Energy Regulatory Authority Project, ISERA, here recently. Dr. Douglas says the cost of energy is critical to competitiveness in tourism, manufacturing, and even households. Efforts to set up a regulatory authority for energy in the OECS has had its setbacks, but Dr. Douglas says that's one reason for the recent meeting here, as Dominica is considered a leader in terms of energy regulation. When the whole process started to evolve in 2008 with World Bank funding, they were thinking of uh, Eastern Caribbean Regulatory Authority at that time. Now we're thinking about an Eastern Caribbean Regulatory Agency. So there's a fundamental difference over that has evolved to where we are now. But the principle of collaboration and cooperation in the field of energy regulation is still very relevant and topical. So that has remained, but the, the, the how it is operating practice is still being, being worked out. And as I mentioned before, even, even the, um, the appraisal of Ectel, um, that would be, have to be a separate study so that we can take that into account before we actually give the final blessing, you know, as a government, as a sub-region, into what the ISERA model should look like going forward with respect to energy regulation. In the area of geothermal energy, Dominica has dug five wells, three exploratory and three production wells. A national abattoir is expected to take advantage of what has been described as a huge domestic market available for pork and poultry. Outlining government's plans for farming in Dominica in his budget presentation, Prime Minister Skerritt revealed that the abattoir would be commissioned before you end. He says this is government's plan to make Dominica self-sufficient in pork and poultry production. This objective has been pursued through two major initiatives, one being the construction of a national abattoir, and the other is to provide financing to existing and potential farmers through the Agricultural Investment Unit the AIU. We are aware that a number of poultry farmers have, been, have upgraded their farms in anticipation of the opening of the abattoir. We can now assure them that the contractor has confirmed that the abattoir will be commissioned and handed over by the end of September of this year. Mr. Skerritt says so far 45 farmers have received financing to establish or upgrade their farms through the Agriculture Investment Unit. The production strategy being pursued aims in the first year at increasing the annual output of saleable meat from 186 pounds to 915,200 pounds, Madam Speaker. This represents just 12% of the total import of poultry in 2012, which was 77.4 million pounds. The livestock unit has estimated that 200 birds be required to achieve the output we targeting in the first instance. 
The Prime Minister says a survey conducted earlier in the year has identified 44 farmers fit for pig farming. The unit has estimated that the local demand for pork is approximately 1.1 million pounds annually. Approximately 50% of this demand is being produced locally. The strategy being pursued, therefore, is to double local production in order to satisfy fully the estimated market requirements. The existing 44 farmers will form the core for doubling the output of pork. Mr. Skerritt outlined some programs that would be introduced to successfully execute this process. Training to improve husbandry, improving the gene stock, intensifying the feeding regime, and upgrading the pens where necessary. Former Dominican Calypso Monarchs will pay tribute to the late Lord Tokyo at an entertainment event in New York on August 22nd. The King of Kings Calypso Extravaganza, being hosted after a two-year absence, aims to highlight Dominica's Calypso culture. Director of Tourism Colin Piper says the show is a good promotion tool for the country. We embrace the potential this event has to increase visitor arrivals because it is a unique opportunity to get a visual of the nature island and our culture through our music. As such, I encourage all Dominicans living abroad that can attend to in fact attend, and I urge them to bring a friend. Certainly, um, DDA and, this, and, and the festivals committee will do what we can in terms of assisting with promotion uh, so that people are aware of this event um, and to the extent that we can encourage private sector to um, partner and sponsor with you, we will do that. Local Calypsoians are being urged to utilize their talent to their financial benefit. A very important issue in relation to that is the question of intellectual property and copyright, because this is one of the areas in which the Calypsoians can in fact make money, quite apart from the shows and the gigs, uh, but in terms of royalty payments for works, and also it imposes a certain challenge to our Calypsoians, the kings themselves, to consider the marketplace and not only limit our focus just to the Dominican audience. Yes, that is very important. We've got to root um, our music on Dominica, uh, or on the Dominican cultural context, but we need to expand uh, our horizons as well to consider the wider Caribbean market. Hidden Lord Tokyo Desiree died on April 12, 2015 in Brooklyn, New York. He is best remembered for his road march hit of 1970, Tennis Shoe Scandal. That's news. South East and Lapin share this year's Memorial Cup in honor of two fallen heroes. That and more in your sports highlights next. Kyrie FM Old School and Police Sports Club will have to do a retake of the third semi-final Division 1 game later this week after some controversy. Kyrie FM Old School protested the third semi-final game against Police Sports Club after some of their players were excluded from the scorer's match list without prior notice or approval from the Old School side. Old School eventually proposed that the issue be resolved in time for last Saturday's final or have the final postponed until a resolution was met. Old school captain Chester Leton wrote to, to, to the executive of the Dominica Amateur Basketball Association expressing displeasure with the actions at that semi-final game, which received a somewhat prompt response from President Jerry Williams. According to Williams, the winning team had an unfair advantage in last week's semi-final game, and the fair chance would have to be allowed to the old school team. The decision has apparently not gone very well with the police squad, who should have played their first finals game over the weekend because some time had to be allowed to them to file an official concern with retaking Game 3. The semi-final game has been postponed to Thursday. Southeastern La Plaine are sharing this year's Memorial Cup in honor of fallen heroes Kurt Hector and Noran John Hope. The two teams met Sunday for the historic match, which ended in a draw down to the penalty shootout. Shakim Stout of RC Doctors has the report. Uh, that Memorial Cup is in the memory of the late Kurt Hector, Noran John Hope. 
and that game ended up in a 3 free draw and in penalties both sides ended up taking all penalties and scoring from the penalty mark. At the end of the day, it was decided by the two teams to share the cup, seeing that it was in favor of their late coach and fellow player, and the teams just said goodbye to that cup, and Mr. Green will lift it up at the Independence Spice Giving Ceremony in two weeks' time. President of the Dominica Amateur Athletics Association, Cedric Harris, sees a need for more to be done to get Dominican athletes further ahead. Harris told Channel 5 Sports after Dominica's recent showing at the, at the NACAC Games, NACAC, in Costa Rica, that athletes are voicing their need for training facilities on the island. While at the Games, we had an end-of-team meeting discussing the way forward for our athletes and what they're looking for towards the future. And one of the high notes of our athletes were lack of facilities and proper facilities for training in Dominica. But as, as for that, I mean, look at that water on the bridge, but um, we have to address it. We can't think that um, it's okay on the way forward. Harry says he has written to policymakers, but no meeting has taken place. I can talk from my end. From my end, I have, I have documented a letter to, to the government, to the, the, sports, the sports minister, I actually went through the her permanent secretary, seeking for some time to sit down and discuss meeting, because uh, I did a proposal to the IWF and uh, seeking assistance for a track in Dominica, and that there was a positive response from that. But um, there was conditions, one of those being that the Ministry of Sports and uh, we showing that we have land, Ministry of Sports being in 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 trying with with that that um, development. We are going into the, the World Championships. We are, they're going to have Congress for the IWF, and uh, there's like small, separate meetings within within the Congress that will be dealing with facility and development. And I go in there as president. I can tell you, I mean, not even sure what I'm going to say. Uh, I don't want to put Dominica, government of Dominica, in bad light, saying that we haven't had an opportunity. I think we're that big in Dominica that, um, and so busy that within since January. I mean, what, August, eight months, that people are so busy. All due respect, everybody's busy, but um, that busy that we can see and sit and discuss the way forward for, for the sport. He says he feels that it is high time that more work be put into setting up such facilities now that local standards are increasing with time. Things are getting better, but at home things are kind of a null where the facility is concerned. I'm right here in the stadium and... Um, I, 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 I think, I think, and I, if I can make a proposal, that something needs to be done, that um, our athletes, our local athletes, be able to use the stadium. I think a run-in will not destroy the stadium. I mean, I, I hope somebody can come and, and correct me, but run-in will not destroy the stadium. From the storm activity expected in the next 24 hours, more in your weather report next. The weather is brought to you by Sagico, wise financial thinking for life. Good evening viewers and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I am your presenter, Bernie Masley Honoré. Yet another disturbance has invaded the island today as a satellite imagery showed convection associated with a tropical wave which moved across the southern portion of the island chain today. Meanwhile, lovely weather, fair to particularly skies were observed across Dominica. Radar imagery indicated a shore one thunderstorm activity across the southern windwards, depriving the island of some much needed rainfall. Tonight's weather is expected to be partly cloudy to cloudy with some scattered showers. And tomorrow, fair to particularly skies with some scattered showers can be expected. Sea conditions tomorrow, moderate in open water, with waves expected to pick up to 7 feet. And looking ahead, occasional cloudy skies with some scattered showers and warm temperatures can be expected into Friday. And across the Los Angeles tomorrow, occasional cloudy skies with scattered showers can be expected across the chain. And on the international scene, 
Clear skies can be expected in New York and Beijing. Thunderstorm activity in Miami and Caracas. Overcast skies and pretty warm temperatures in London. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.50 a.m. and will set at 6.31 p.m. For further information, visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Thank you for joining us this evening. Have a good night. Look, Mommy. Perfect. When you've been here, you know what's important. Protect it with Sagical. Wise financial thinking for life. To end the news, the headlines again. A labor relations professional says the local economy is not ready for new taxes, as announced in the 2015-2016 budget. The parliamentary opposition calls for greater inclusion in pre-budget consultations and Ambassador Felix Gregoire remembers former Freedom Party Health Minister Alan Guy, dead at 86. Feel free to send your questions and comments to news at marpin2k4.com. On behalf of the production team, I am Idona Baptist. Thanks for watching. Join us again tomorrow.